Hi, I'm attorney Greg Dell here with attorney Stephen Jessup, and we are going to discuss third party administrators and what their role is with long term and short term disability insurance claims. Steve, I know through the thousands of disability insurance claims that you've handled, you've come into contact with multiple third party administrators. Who are the most common third party administrators that you work with on your files? I'd say probably the most common since the overwhelming uh, number of cases are ERISA based group policies is Sedgwick uh, handling uh, claims for whether it be Walmart, uh, AT&T are some of the big ones um, you know, that they handle. Uh, but even some of the major insurance companies act as third party administrators. Uh, I've had claims with Hartford, Liberty Mutual acting in that capacity. Uh, and Unum even handles some of MetLife's claims as a third party administrator. Uh, so it's more common than you would think, uh, but I would have to say that Sedgwick is probably the most notorious and uh, quote unquote popular of them. And there's third party administrators get involved in multiple situations from what I've seen. One is the situation like you're talking about where you have a Walmart or a Walgreens or an AT&T, these large multinational companies that have self-funded disability plans, which means that if you get approved for disability, the payment's coming from the assets of the company, not from an insurance company usually. And there's probably hundreds of companies that are set up like that. The other types of third party administrators I see are, for example, like Disability Management Services, mm -hmm. who's third party administrator for Equitable Life Insurance Company. Because Equitable Life Insurance Company doesn't sell um, disability insurance policies anymore, so they hired another company to handle the administration of those claims. Um, what about your interaction with like Trustmark advisors? Trustmark as well, uh, you'll see where policies, especially sometimes you'll get a call and the person has a very old policy, they don't remember who the insurance company is anymore. And when you do get it, it is a name that you, know, you, you don't recognize. And a lot of times Trustmark does have that book of business. Uh, they do have some of their own, but uh, typically uh, you know, they, they are handling it in that capacity. I think, and from another perspective where the third party administrator can, I think more often than not, it's either help or hurt the claimant is in the ERISA context. Mm -hmm. Because in ERISA claims, usually when we're looking for an abusive discretion standard, we're talking about a conflict of interest. And the conflict of interest is when you have a company, the insurance company is the payor and also the, the decision maker on the claim. And often we try to argue, well, there's a conflict of interest here, so that company can't be fair because they don't want to pay the claim because it's going to be their money. So how could they be fair making the decision? But when you have a third party administrator, when it's not their money and they're making a decision, is it better for the claimant or is it not better for the claimant in that situation? I mean, I think historically from the call volume we get, it's, it's not as good for the claimant in the sense that Sedgwick especially, uh, they're not going to be on the hook. If a lawsuit has to be filed, Cedric's not on the hook for any of the damages or anything that may be awarded at trial. It's the company. And then the company has quote unquote clean hands and saying, hey, we hired this, this third party to determine whether or not benefits should be paid and they told us they shouldn't, so we didn't. So there's a double you know, whammy of sorts of, hey, we were shifting the blame elsewhere, it's passing the buck. Um, so I think that it, at least from a standpoint of claim denials from it, uh, it's, it's more harmful and hurtful because there is really no financial repercussion for the third party administrator. And in my opinion too, there's probably even an incentive because you're hired by a company to administer the policy. If you're approving too many claims, I'm sure that company is gonna go and take a look at the work that you're doing for them. So they have an incentive to try to keep their you know, customer happy and sometimes it can be the detriment of the, uh, the insurer. You know, that last point you made is where I think in many cases it's worse to have the mm -hmm. third party administrator because they're getting paid some kind of contract, a, a, a fee per case to handle or a monthly fee to handle X amount of cases for this company. And then if they start, the third party administrator starts approving a lot of claims, the company's gonna be like, wait, wait a second, what's going on? Are you just approving claims? Are you really working them? Whereas the company would probably like to see less claims get paid and the company says, well, we didn't think these people were eligible, so we denied them all. Mm -hmm. Or not all of them, but a majority of them. So I think it would be harder when you have the, the third party administrator involved with these claims. So we did this, this is a frequently asked question we get is, you know, I have a policy through Walmart or Walgreens or Hartford or some or equitable, why am I dealing with this other named company and are they authorized to work on my claim? And usually they are. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you're dealing with them. That's their involvement. They're really just a decision maker as to whether or not you should or shouldn't get paid. But ultimately they get the authority from the person who's paying the check. Paying the check. So 
If you're having any issues at any stage of a disability claim, feel free to give us a call. We always offer a free consultation and we're happy to speak with you about your claim.